That's chaos. I got dogs barking, thunder, and a hundred plus year old camera. Hello everyone, welcome to Film Camera Obsession. I'm Todd Macon, and I'm gonna pick up where I left off with this Panoram Kodak from 1907. I'm gonna load some Portra 160. All right, so this, uh, if you remember, is the 1907 Panoram Kodak, and it shoots 120 film, two by seven inches. Let's load it up, and I'm gonna, this is my first time loading it, so we'll see how it goes. So, doing some research, found a great website, the gentleman who's really into these cameras and did some work on them and has shot them. And he was recommending Portra 160. Let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, so we pull up these little tabs here. And then we're going to slide this guy out. All right, this may be a sacrificial roll of Portra. Okay, I'm changing my mind. I, I thought originally I was gonna go under this roller, but the way it's moving, I'm realizing that's actually just to facilitate the film going over and it sits in there nice and neat. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, I'm so nervous I'm going to jack this up. I don't know where to line it up. <laughs> I have just utilized MikeEckman.com, who uh, has worked with these cameras, has a really helpful website. And I was really worried about lining up the film so that I knew where the first exposure was. And according to him, the old school Kodak viewing window to see what your exposure number is should still show up there, which is kind of mind blowing after all this time. The original 105 film would get seven exposures of the panoramic uh, window here and 120 film will get four. Looks cool. That slid in nice and easy. The other thing is too, I have no idea if this is still light proof. This is so crazy. This will definitely be the oldest camera I've ever shot. Cannot see a thing through this window. I can tell right now I'm going to be in the dark room. How is it that this will line up after 113 years? I'm really working hard to trust right now. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. I don't... Uh... <sighs> I'm sitting here sweating over what, a $6 roll of film? Um, and yet it's history and, oh, something clicked. Ah. You can hear the backing paper coming through. And now I'm to the film. <gasps> what the hell was that? That <laughs> can't be good. Now, Can you hear that? This is, this is terrifying. <laughs> Here's what just happened. Uh, I just wound the entire roll of 120 film. I did not see a number. All right, to the dark room. By feel and maybe by luck, I've got it back on the original spool here. And we're gonna try this again. Um, I did not see numbers in that window. At all. And uh... Did 
Did I put it on the wrong way? I think I did. That it would explain why I didn't see anything. I think I put it on upside down. So it goes this way? Yeah. All right. If you're doing this yourself somewhere, you come across one of these, that's better. So now, I should see numbers. <laughs> There's a one. <laughs> so Kodak, after, God, a hundred some years, Numbers still in the right place. Yeah, of course. All right, so this should be loaded. It's there, two. And then it's basically four exposures for every one. So uh, the next time I go, I'm going to line it up to six and then to 10 and then to 14. But if I didn't totally expose that roll in my first screw up as I loaded it, I am loaded and ready to go. So originally there were these spirit bubbles here, they called them. They're basically bubble levels. Uh, one on the side, one on the top, so that way you can know if you're not wonky, which when you're taking a panoramic photo would really matter. The way I solved it is I've got a small carpenter's level. That's about the same length as the camera box here. And I'm just gonna set that on top. I hope I have better luck shooting it than I did loading it. it might be a sacrificial roll of portrait all right thank you very much I'm Todd Macon this has been film camera obsession sometimes it's film camera fumbling but hey it's the process right let's go shoot some panoramic films take care